Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through otosclerosis. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com slash otosclerosis or in the ear, nose and throat section of the Zero to Finals surgery book. So let's jump straight in. Otosclerosis is a condition where there is remodeling of the small bones in the middle ear, leading to conductive hearing loss. Otto refers to ears and sclerosis refers to hardening. It usually presents before the age of 40 years old. The development of otosclerosis is thought to be the result of a combination of environmental and genetic factors, although the exact mechanism is not fully understood. It can be inherited in an autosomal dominant pattern. However, no specific genetic mutations have been identified. It's more common in women. Let's talk about the pathophysiology. The auditory ossicles are the tiny bones in the middle ear that transmit sound vibrations from the tympanic membrane to the cochlea. They are the malleus, incus and stapes. The stapes is connected to the oval window or the fenestra ovalis of the cochlea where it transmits vibrations into the cochlea. The cochlea converts these vibrations into sensory signals that the brain interprets as sound. In patients with otosclerosis, these tiny bones in the middle ear are affected by abnormal bone remodeling and abnormal bone formation. This mainly affects the base of the stapes where it attaches to the oval window and causes stiffening and fixation, preventing it from transmitting sound effectively to the cochlea. It causes conductive hearing loss as opposed to sensory neural hearing loss. Let's talk about the presentation. The typical presentation is a patient under 40 years of age presenting with unilateral or bilateral hearing loss and tinnitus. The hearing loss tends to affect the hearing of lower pitch sounds more than higher pitch sounds. Female speech may be easier to hear than male speech due to the generally higher pitch. This is the reverse of the pattern seen in presbycusis or age-related hearing loss. Due to conductive hearing loss with intact sensory hearing, the patient can experience their own voice as very loud in comparison to the environment and this is due to their own voice being conducted via the bones of the skull rather than via the air. This can lead to the patient talking more quietly because they think the volume of their voice is loud in comparison to the environment. Let's talk about the examination of somebody with otosclerosis. Otoscopy, when you look inside the ear canal, is usually normal. Weber's test is normal if the otosclerosis is bilateral, meaning that when the tuning fork is applied to the centre of the forehead, the patient will hear the sound equally in both ears. If otosclerosis is unilateral or affects one ear more than the other, the sound will be louder in the affected ear when doing Weber's test. This is because the affected ear with conductive hearing loss has turned up the volume and so when the sound is transmitted via bone conduction, it sounds louder in the affected ear. Rini's test will show conductive hearing loss. The sound will be easily heard when the tuning fork is applied to the mastoid process due to bone conduction and then when the patient stops being able to hear the sound during bone conduction and the tuning fork is removed from the mastoid process and held close to the ear canal, they won't be able to hear the sound because air conduction is worse than bone conduction. Next let's talk about investigations. 
Audiometry is the initial investigation of choice in otosclerosis, which will show a conductive hearing loss pattern. Bone conduction readings will be normal between 0 and 20 decibels. However, air conduction readings will be greater than 20 decibels, plotted below the 20 decibel line on the chart. Hearing loss tends to be greater at lower frequencies in patients with otosclerosis. Tympanometry will show generally reduced admittance or absorption of sound. The tympanic membrane in otosclerosis is stiff and non-compliant due to the stiffening and fixation of the small bones. And this means the tympanic membrane does not absorb sound and reflects most of it back. High resolution CT scans can be used to detect bony changes associated with otosclerosis, although they're not always required. Finally, let's talk about management. The options for management in otosclerosis are conservative with the use of hearing aids to improve hearing and surgical, which can involve a stapedectomy or a stapedotomy. Surgical management is generally successful and can potentially restore hearing back to normal. Surgery involves going in through the ear canal, lifting the tympanic membrane and some of the surrounding skin out of the way in order to access the middle ear, and then performing a stapedectomy or a stapedotomy. Stapedectomy involves removing the entire stapes bone and replacing it with a prosthesis. The prosthesis is attached to the oval window and hooks around the incus transmitting sound from the incus to the cochlea in the same way that the stapes normally would. It essentially replaces the stapes. Stapedotomy involves removing part of the stapes bone and leaving the base of the stapes, or the foot plate, attached to the oval window. A small hole is made in the base of the stapes for the prosthesis to enter. A prosthesis is added to transmit sound from the incus to the cochlea via the base of the stapes. If you like this video, consider joining the Zero to Finals Patreon account, where you get early access to these videos before they appear on YouTube. You also get access to my comprehensive course on how to learn medicine and do well in medical exams, digital flashcards for rapidly testing the key facts you need for medical exams, early access to the Zero to Finals podcast episodes, and question podcasts which you can use to test your knowledge on the go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.